handling objections. Really, uh, you know, some people say this business is a numbers game because it takes many encounters with different people to develop communication skills to become a good networker. None of us learned it at school, none of us studied network marketing in university, etc. So we all have to learn it through experience. Now, there's five steps to mastering handling objections. So first is survival, second one is knowledge, third one is skill, fourth one is listening, and fifth one, well, I'll just keep it a secret for the time being, okay? So first one, survival. Basically, most people handle objections this way when they first get started in business. It's survival mode. So, you know, it's fight or flight. You know, they get defensive. Every time a person says, oh, but I, I, is this a copy? You know, is this one of those pyramid schemes? Or is this, you know, whatever. They get defensive, they retreat, they either disappear or they fight back. They attack the person, you know. So, uh, this is really hardwired human behavior and it's not very effective. Because if you win a lot of arguments, you will be very right, but you'll have very little customers and very little team members because you're just basically fighting against them. But that, most people do that, it's hardwired. Now, next level up is knowledge. So now we learn to, encounter, uh, to counter objection with facts. So we are more in control. It's still not great in terms of results, but now we calm down a little bit. Now, every time a person says, oh, is this a pyramid business? We go, well, let me explain to you. So we counter that with facts. Facts are features, and what people want is benefits, not features, really. You know, so every year millions of drill bits are purchased, but what all of those drill bit buyers want is not drill bits, really. They want holes, right? Exactly the same way in this business, you know. Many of us try and sell the, the, the features of the business. We say, oh, you know, this, that, and this, that, you know, this. But really what we should be selling is the benefits. It's the lifestyle. It's the trips, it's the, all the benefits that you'll get from this business. Not really the actual features of going out, selling the product, making £3.80, etc. Now, the next level up is skill. Now, this is where we build the skill and now we focus on benefits. We anticipate the objections and handle them before they even come up. We use the feel, felt, found formula where, you know, a person says, you know, oh, is this one of those pyramid scams, you know, and we go, oh, I know how you feel about it. I felt exactly the same way when I got first started. But what I found is that this is actually a legitimate business with a product with lots of people making money, blah, blah, blah. So we now are a bit more better at it because we've got the skill and we get better results, but it's still limited because it is a you-based formula and not them-based formula. And really, what you want to be doing is concentrating on the person, not on yourself. You know, when you walk into a room, it shouldn't be, here I am. It should be, there you are. Right? It should be always concentrated on the person. So, the next level up is listening. You know, and this is really where we start listening to really what is behind that objection. So, most people's objections are 10% of what they are saying and 90% of what they are feeling. You know, so what's changing? You are. You are now becoming not simply excited and enthusiastic about your products, company and profession, but truly confident. You know, the more grounded you feel in your opportunity, the less you will feel the need to defend, attack or escape or out logic or out a newer person that giving you the objection. What you'll find is you'll truly be interested. So if somebody, if somebody says, oh, you know, but you know, I couldn't do this, you know, you might be saying, so why do you think that? You know, you'll start digging deeper. What is that stopping them? And they will say, oh, well, I tried this before, but it didn't work for me. He says, so you will find ways actually helping them really to come out of it. But number five, and the best, is the mastery. You know, that was the, 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 what, what I didn't tell you to, in the first place. So the ultimate success to handling objections is to handle your own objections. What most of the time what is happening when you're getting objections from the customers or you're getting objections from business prospects is that they're actually reflecting you. It's like a mirror. So those objections that are mostly grounded in yourself, that's what you'll get most of the time. People who think that this product is too expensive, guess what objection they get most of the time? It's too expensive. People who don't really feel confident that they will succeed in this business, guess what objection they get most of the time? People go, ah, oh, you'll never succeed in it. Ah, oh, you will never work in it. It's just a good bunch of services. So it's mostly people get back what you read. So get really truly clear on what you're doing and how you feel about what you're doing. And the world will respond to you differently. If you feel 100% confident, but I mean 100%, you've got no shadow of a doubt that you will succeed in this business, I trust me, people will look at you differently. When you walk in a room, people will feel that you just walked into a room because you've got
got no shadow of doubt, you know. And the objections people most consistently offer you is the gift for your development and ultimate success. Are precise expressions of those objections you hold most fiercely yourself. No more, no less. So really those objections that people are giving to you are good. Because it shows to you what you need to improve on. If a person keeps saying to you, oh, you know, the sample kit is too expensive, what you need to be working on yourself is to believe that this sample kit is worth every single penny. If you think that mm, this 50 pounds is really a lot for the person to get started, then you'll get that objection nine times out of ten. People go, oh yeah, it's a nice business, but I can't afford the sample kit. Because you unconsciously, even if you don't think about it, if you don't even say it, you give that message to the person that it's still a little bit a lot of the money. You know, when you ask for that 50 pounds or whichever way, they'll feel that. But if you've got no shadow of doubt that that 50 pounds is absolutely life changing and it's worth every single penny, when the person asks, you know, what sample kit should I get, you'll just go, yeah, the 50 pound one. There's no question about that. Right? But if you don't feel confident, you'll go, yeah, but by the way, they do 7 pounds 50 as well. You know, you could, well, they don't do that anymore. But you get what I'm saying.